What's up guys, this is Art from Armand Entertainment. Um, I originally started out as a karaoke DJ. Um, eventually um, got into the photo booth business because I was kind of tired of doing my events and watching photo booth companies come in with equipment that wasn't really up to standards. Um, they would also show up late during introductions. You hear clinking and clanking of the equipment during setup um, that they were doing while I was making introductions or while people were there. So I wanted to offer my clients an option to have a better quality service, a better photo booth service. So I've been doing this for about three and a half years, almost four years now. Um, and I did my research in the beginning by asking other photo booth companies on Facebook um, what they use, what they like, what they don't like. Um, now, of course, like everybody else, I had a budget, right? Uh, but I didn't want to go too low because I wanted a quality product and I couldn't afford anything too high. So I had a nice tower booth from your city photo booth, which I still use to this day. It's a fantastic machine, um, easy to set up, very compact. Um, however, there were a couple things that I was looking for to improve upon um, to take my photo booth experience to the next level. And I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, a few things about a photo booth that I found recently. Um, it's the Max um, Curve. Um, it's a great DSLR booth. It's light, it's compact, um, and fits pretty much all the needs that I have for my photo booth company in the market that I'm in right now. So I'm going to show you a little bit about it, what I like, what I don't like about it, what some improvements that possibly can be made to it. But in all, um, I love this booth and I'm going to show you guys just a little bit about it. Um, if you have any questions about it, any comments or anything, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to help you and I'm sure Danny Max will be able to help you as well because he'll be watching this video. Uh, great customer service by, by the way. So anyway, um, we're going to show you the first things first is the compactness of the booth. So as you can see here, the booth itself fits in two small US SKB cases. These things fit on one cart, utility cart. I use a very, very old, small cart. Um, I've actually gotten two other larger carts because of the Your City Photo booth was bigger and needed a bigger cart. So I had this one lying around and I was wondering, hey, will this uh, Max Curve booth show up, fill up um, nicely on this cart? And it does, and it comes in two cases. This one big case here holds the booth itself um, as well as the stands that come with it. And this case here is the printer stand case. So you have one uh, SKB's case for the actual booth and the components that, that are needed for it. And the other part is for the printer stand that goes right next to it. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like here in just a second set up. All right, here's the case off of the cart. You got to take it off of the cart in order to open this thing up. This is a very hard shell case. It's made of the plastic, but it's very rugged and will protect your equipment from getting bumps, scrapes, and bruises. We all know that when we're transporting stuff in, we're not 100% on the ball when it comes to protecting our equipment. Stuff shifts around in the car, the truck, wherever you're transporting this in. Um, this is gonna protect that. Um, you'll see in the inside in just a little bit, some more protection that comes with it. There are very heavy duty latches that will keep this closed. There's a handle in the front. Over on the other side, there is another handle, another latch. And the best part about this case itself is the fact that you can tilt this up. And if you don't have a cart and you wanna carry it a different way, I'll tilt around over here and it's got a pop-up handle and a couple wheels on the bottom where you can literally grab it and walk into your venue with it. Now you might have some issues with stairs and whatnot, but just like anything else, you gotta be careful. All right, so we're gonna put this back like so. Put that back down, tilt it, and now we're gonna take a look at what's inside. All right, it's time to open this up. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna get down to floor level here. This is a lot easier for me. All right, so as you can see, we got the latches. I open this up. One of the things that I wanted to point out is that this case also has these holes, as you can see here, one there, and it connects to there. You can put locks on here. So if you really wanna lock this down so nobody can get in um, and use this even at the event to you know protect your stuff, you can put your wallet and whatever here while you're doing a booth. Good place to you know walk your stuff away so nobody gets to it. Fortunately, it won't protect you know protect you from having someone take the whole thing, but you know pretty easy to spot somebody rolling out with your case at an event. So let's open it up. Uh, as I mentioned, rugged plastic, and there's like protection all over this thing. So we got foam on every level. There's good quality hard foam. This isn't flimsy, flimsy like thin stuff that's gonna you know fall apart too easily. Um, it's very protective because you want your booth to, booth to always look nice. 
This is our boat, our base here, <clears throat> and there are two parts to the base. Uh, there's another base in case you're doing, I think, uh, an iPad booth and not a printing booth, a DSLR booth. Um, this part here is where you're going to put the stands or the, the columns for your um, DSLR booth. And this part here is where we're going to put the column for the printer stand. So it looks really nice. Um, right here, there are two disc areas. Uh, I believe that is for the Ape Lab coin lights, which I did not purchase yet. Uh, I'm going to. I did purchase a couple um, small lights from Amazon. They sort of do the trick, but not as bright as I would like them to. So I'm going to go ahead and fork over a couple extra bucks, get those, and make my booth look even better. The lights uh, light up the columns, which you'll see in a little bit. Um, they are a great eye-catching part for the photo booth. As you know, sometimes we're stuck in a corner with not a whole lot of lighting and people may not see the booth. Um, even if you have like a stand, uh, one of those signs um, that says, you know, please step into the photo booth, that's great and all, but still lack of light in your area may have an issue for other people being to see and utilize the booth. Well, if you light it up, it looks attractive and fun and inviting. Um, I sometimes bring my own up lights, as you can see something like that, just to light up the area, but it's also really cool to see the booth lit up itself. So anyway, this is the base. It's very, uh, it's weighted down, so this protects the booth from tipping over. Again, another piece of foam to protect uh, the next layer. Uh, inside, we have our light deflector, right? So this is gonna go on top of the booth. Um, this will reflect the light so it's not a direct flash on them. Fantastic, easily taken out. Another piece of protective foam. Here we have the top column. Um, this is going to go on top of the booth, um, on top of the, the first column, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, by the way, both columns, they have the cover here, which comes off on both sides, so you can access the internals to put it together. And light does come through here. So as you can see, there's light kind of coming through here. Um, again, it gives you that, that ability to put a light in here and have it glow. Um, and look really nice. So these are held on with, with Velcro. Um, they don't fall off very easily. Matter of fact, they're kind of hard to take off, but not too hard that it's a pain in the butt, right? And then the next layer is our second column. Well, technically it's the first column. It's what's gonna go on the bottom to hold up the head of the booth. And just like the other column I showed you, um, we've got the covers that have Velcro. These can be taken off so you can access the internals. Um, so you can get wires in there. The, again, these latches are is what everything's uh, hooked together. And something about these latches, you can get these on Amazon. So I know that um, over time, the other booth that I had, we would lose screws and I don't know where to get them. I mean, I could have a machinist make them, but these are very universal, um, which is a big plus for this booth. They're adjustable, um, they're not expensive. You can buy them in packs, I think of like eight or something like that. Um, so again, nice to have parts that you can get really easily. Uh, and this all fits together. It's almost like playing with Legos, which is really, really freaking cool. I love Legos. Um, my kids do too. And the next part I'm going to take out is the booth. Um, this is the top part of the booth. It's beautiful, right? So um, I'm going to stop the video here for a second so I can get this part out and then I'll show you how to put this puppy together and then I'll show you the internals. All right, here we go. So we got that uh, bottom column we're going to put right down on here. As you can see, it fits right snugly with those tabs that are part of the base. And we've got to take these pins right over here and get the latch under the lip of that and snap that into place. Now, the keyword here is snap. All right, so if you're going to hear it lock and snap into place. If you don't hear a snap, it's not on tightly, and you'll have to adjust this pin. This pin actually screws left and right to tighten and loosen um, to really adjust the tension that you're going to have on this lever. You need to have that kind of snap. Not too tight because you could break stuff. Um, at least I don't think this can be broken, but I don't want to take any risks. So I want it to be just enough so it snaps into place. I think it's still in place from my weekend gig. So this goes in like that. As you can see right there. You want to get just under that lip, like so, and then you should hear a little snap lock. Boom, perfect, that's exactly what you wanna hear. Same thing on the other side. We've got the same type of latch. It's gotta come down, All right, almost there. Reach my hand in, and that didn't snap. So, what do we do? Take it out, give it one twist, 
Righty tighty, lefty, lefty loosey. I'm going righty tighty. Just two turns. Let's see if that works. Always in baby steps. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Next part we're going to do is going to be the top of the column. Same thing. Next part of the column. Remember I told you about the short little buddy. It's right here. We're going to place that at the top. Okay. So we got our top one, our bottom one, and literally same thing we did before. We're going to get our hands in there and I should hear nice that's a good one all right here comes another one from the top so you can see it's going on the top get that in there and we should hear snap crackle pop that's good nice and snug this thing ain't going anywhere um, I'm gonna leave my covers off for now because I'm gonna utilize that uh, open space to get my wires in later. Uh, so now let's go ahead and get the top of the booth. Guys, here's the top of the booth. All right? I've actually installed my Surface Pro. I got the Surface Pro 6, I believe. Um, the i7 uh, is what you want in terms of the processor. That's apparently the best one. Of course, I got my Canon uh, Rebel uh, 6, I believe, uh, camera in there. Um, both. I go with the best stuff as, as possible within my budget um, to make the best product for my clients. So this part right here is going to go right on top of here. And just like we did before, we're going to utilize these latches to lock them into place. All right. So let's go ahead. And I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and put that on top first before we do the next part. It is on top. I have not latched it yet. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's go take a look. Remember, we always want that to snap. So as you can see up inside there, we've got our, our latch, which is right here, and where it's got to snap onto right there. Again, it's got to snap. So I'm gonna put it on. Ooh, that's nice. All right, let's get the next one. Put it up in there. And it's too tight. It's not pulling down. I don't want to break anything. So I'm gonna take that down and I'm going to loosen it. So instead of the other one, we went to the right, we're going to go left to loosen it one, two, always do it in small increments because we don't want anything to get too tight or break. So I loosened it a couple times, still a little too tight, baby steps, one, two, three, let's go four. seems like it's way too tight. So now let's try it and see if we can get this going. And that's it. It snapped. It's good. We're locked and loaded. I ain't going nowhere. All right, next part. What's in the booth? What's in the booth? You gotta put a reflector on. Um, up at the top is the flash that comes with the unit. Um, I was skeptical. I always use the, the Alien Bees, and they're phenomenal, and they're great, and I love them. They're kind of bulky, and I, I looked at this thing, and I was like, this is really small. The pictures turned out phenomenal, so no difference. Um, and we've got a hole up here. I don't know what that's for. I guess it's for whatever you wanna do with it. Um, I think this is an umbrella screw here. So we had a reflector down here, something to reflect the light. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in right there. Face forward, because the light's gonna come off of here and it's gonna bounce off this card and onto the people rather than flashing right in the face to reflect them. So it's a lot easier on the eyes when our um, booth uh, guests are getting their pictures taken. As you can see, I got my camera there. Um, Surface Pro is there. Apparently, you can change this into a, uh, an iPad booth. Um, I don't really do iPad booths. I like to do them printed. Um, and I just, I trust the DSLR camera better. Some people, you know, are fine with iPads. Me, personally, I like the DSLR camera. But this faceplate here, um, you can purchase a, an iPad-shaped um, one or other um, laptops or other Surface Pro sizes, whatever. Um, but I got the Surface Pro 6 size. So the back, it's easy to open. My other booth had a hinge and a lock and all this kind of stuff. And this just pops right off. What it does is it lips in right here. And then right here in that spot and that spot is metal. And right here are some magnets. So this actually is held together with, with the high powered magnets or high quality magnets that literally, right? So you got to kind of pull on, tug on it good. So they're good magnets. That's going to stay in place really well. All right. 
Don't beat me up on this. I try to make this as clean as possible, but here are the guts. And this is one of the things that I wish was better, but I get why it was designed the way it was designed. It's a little compact in here. Um, I've got really big hands that's hard to fit in different spots. And maybe I could take some, some time to redesign this, but everything fits and it's compact and I love compact. It's again, one of the reasons why I got it, but it could be a little bit bigger, I think. Um, maybe depth wise or width wise, but maybe it's the case or, you know, maybe the, the next design will have it, but it works, right? So everything fits in here. We've got our flash. Uh, we've got our modeling light, our camera. There's a, a USB hub right over here. And I've kind of Velcroed all the components, you know, the power strips and everything to the side, the power strips under there. Um, the Surface Pro is in here. Um, holding the faceplate that I was talking about earlier, there are these window um, clips to hold in like windows or screens. You can get these off of Amazon. Again, pieces that you can get off of Amazon, the easily like losable or missing parts, you don't have to special order them. I just go to Amazon, uh, type in window clip and boom, I got myself a set of 20 for like five bucks. It's awesome. Um, so that's really nice. Everything's in here, the wires. Again, I could do a better job of cleaning up, but I just got this and set it up like a week ago. I'll probably do a better job and, and set it up better moving forward. So gobbledygook of wires here. Um, I normally have taken my printer wire and printer uh, power cable and kept it with the printer, but why? At this point, I'm just gonna keep this inside here and it's one less thing that I've gotta worry about losing or forgetting to bring to a gig. Um, so I leave my printer cable, uh, USB cable and power cable coupled together with some Velcro. I love Velcro straps. You can get those on Amazon too. Um, they're in there and already hardwired and in. So if I need to set up quick, it's already done. My attendants don't have to worry about looking for it. Um, I won't forget it. It'll always be in here. Um, so the next, I'm going to put this off to the side because we're not doing the printer just yet. Um, we're going to go ahead and hook up our power. So the power literally just goes down in there. I'll go ahead and string that the my power strip cable down to the bottom, and then I'm going to tuck in my power outlet, uh, my actual my extension cord from the power outlet, and put it under here. I'm not going to duct tape or uh, gaff tape everything here today because I'm the only one in this office. But trust me, in my events, I do use gaff tape to make it safe and look nice for our customers. So let me go ahead and I'm going to string that through there, and I'm going to hook up my extension cord, and then I'll show you the next part. All right, I've threaded it through. We're looking good. I know I could probably use a better extension cord and I'll be looking for some tips. I love to get feedback. Um, but again, I just got the stuff put together last week um, and I'm always altering the way I set things up to make it easier, look more better, more better if that's a term. Um, so anyway, I've, I've threaded my power strip through the column and down there. Um, and I've got my power cord and I wanted to show you guys something else that's really cool. And that's this adapter. Um, this right here is probably one of the greatest things I've purchased recently. Um, it's an adapter for your outlets that is flat up against the wall so it helps prevent people from pulling it out. And the cool part is this swivels right here. So if this um, is actually reversed up top, you don't go like that. You literally can watch this, this is cool. I can twist this around. And it's really hard to pull this out. Like this ain't coming out. You have to pull that out. So worrying about people tripping over uh, the wire and pulling that out or somebody trying to utilize your outlet for their phone charging or something else, they're going to have a hard time to get this out. It's not going to be so easy. So it's safe uh, and secure there. And we've got that hooked up. All right, next part, I'm going to pretend like I put all my wires in and I got my lights and whatnot. Again, these things just go on really easily. As you can see, a Velcro right on top and the bottom column very easily very nice and clean um, I do have another uh, piece coming that'll give me a gap so I can put my printer wires in there that's another reason why I'm not doing it right now is because I'm waiting on that piece but you can like feed your printer wire through here and power come up through the column and into the printer with stand which you're gonna see here in just a second All right, here we go printer stand coming next Wow what's that another column cool and again another plastic diffusing piece of plastic for the column to glow same concept as before we're gonna stick right there we want this to snap that's a nice little snap there we want this down here to snap 
I may have to adjust it. Let's find out. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Can I do it? Survey says, no, nah, not tight enough. So we're going to loosen that up. I'm going to turn it once and see if that helps. This one's a little tighter than the other ones. Really tight. Let's try that. This is one turn. Get that on there. Nope, not tight enough. I like it to have at least one snap. It doesn't have to snap any on tight enough. And two turns. This should do the trick. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, cool. Almost done, right? Well, now we go back to our printer stand case. Grab the top base. Pop that on right there. Like so. And again, we are going to snap. Now, this will be a lot quicker if you're not holding a phone. <laughs> and you've done it a few times. So, the first time or so you do this, it might take a little bit, but you'll be, and that didn't really snap, but it felt really tight. And guess what? That is super tight. Look at that. Printer stand, nice and clean. Okay, again, we got our diffuser. That's what I call it. Pop that on there. And we have ourselves a nice, clean looking booth. Let me get that on just right. Am I not doing something right here? See, one-handed. There you go, bam. Looking good, okay? So, what do we got? We got a nice booth that's put together, top to bottom. This should take you about 10 minutes to put together the right way. I know it's, you know, it's like, oh, I can do it in under a minute, but, you know, you got a few things to take in consideration. That's threading the wires. You know, you may have to screw in or uh, readjust some of those clamps. You gotta lay down your cord, right? You should be gas taping that down so nobody trips. Um, we're almost ready. Let's pretend that we had this going. Um, another, another tip that I like to do, before you send any booth out, I highly recommend setting it up first, doing your test strip before it goes to an event. All too often, um, I hear some, you know, people are having issues with sending people out and they don't have, you know, the right lighting and this and that. And it's, you, you're never always going to get it down, but always test your booth out before you, you send it out. Make sure that printer's working properly. That way when you packed it up and everything's good to go, you know that before it went out the door, you had a test print with the actual client stuff on it. That's just how I operate. You can do whatever you want, but that's, I'm, I'm just very extra cautious. All right, final part. Probably the biggest thing that sold me on this, and there are other booths out there that do this. Um, I do a lot of events with kids, right? So a lot of schools, um, a lot of mitzvahs, and they're usually not tall like I am. I'm six foot four. And with the other booth, it does have a tilting function, but not low enough. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we take the combination of the lightweight of this, the customer service that I get from the manufacturer, um, and the fact that this thing can tilt, not only forward to get those kids that are super duper short, but also backwards to get those people that are super duper tall like me, it has changed my view on doing events. I have two other of the other booths and now I dread having to take the other one out only if it's a kid's event because it's just, this is so much easier, you know. Um, can't say anything more about this booth. Um, you know, it, it, like I said, it could be a little bit wider um, this way and this way just to fit the components. Maybe a half inch to an inch on both sides. The cases are great. Um, and I give this a, an A. This is a great booth. Highly recommend it. All right, guys. Well, that's it. This is the uh, the Curve DSLR booth from Max Design. Um, I give it an A plus. Thanks for watching. This is actually the first video I've ever done uh, demoing any product whatsoever. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to give those who are out there looking to see if this is the booth for them and a good opportunity to see what it's really about. Um, some of the tips: uh, make sure your latches snap, uh, not too hard, not too soft, just like goalie locks. Um, Set up your wires before you uh, put the, the diffusers on the bottom for the columns. Get the Ape Lab lights if you really want the, the, the good light coming through the columns because the other stuff, the cheap stuff on Amazon, uh, in terms of like those, uh, the water submersible, the LED lights, the, the push glow, they're like $29, $39. They're, they're fine, but they're not gonna give you the ultimate lighting experience. Go with the Ape Labs. I think they're like $60, $70 each. Totally worth it. Um, and then again, 
the big function for me that really sold me was the, the ability to tilt forward and backwards uh, for those taller and shorter people. Because with the kids especially, um, I was getting pictures that they're like neck up and there's so much headroom. And I really wanted the kids to have that good experience. I mean, the parents really want those pictures too. So we want them to look really good. And you got the parents who's really tall and the kid who's really low. And you're worrying about, you know, having to put a kid up on a chair, which is dangerous. Having, you know, have the, the parents hold the kid, which is uncomfortable for them. With this tilting function, it takes all that uncomfortableness out of it and really gives a good experience for the user. So again, A plus, good job. And I can't wait to see what the uh, next thing they come up with. That's it.